In this video, we'll talk about the variety of convergence tests we have so far, as well as how to choose which one to use in a given case to determine if a series converges or diverges. The point here is again to analyze what we've got so far, all the different techniques we have, and how you can analyze a series you're given to pick what the appropriate technique is for that problem. So your first thing to think about should be the nth term divergence test. And this is sort of, if nothing else works, well maybe this might tell you the series diverges. The idea of this test was the fact that if the terms don't go to zero, the series must diverge. If none of your techniques seem to work, this could be something to check really quick to see if this might tell you what happens to your series. The main point to remember here is that this can never tell you that a series converges. It only tells you that it diverges if these terms don't go to zero. It's a one directional statement. It will never tell you that it converges. The phrase converges by the nth term divergence test does not exist, and that is not something you can use to talk about a series. One example of this could be something like the following. If you had the series from one to infinity, something like this, sine of n plus n squared over n squared plus one. If I look at the limit of these terms, it goes to one, not zero, therefore this diverges. That's a divergence test. If your series looking at doesn't have all positive terms, there's only really two ways to go about figuring out what happens to this series. So the first option is the alternating series test. This requires the series to be alternating. But once you have that, it's pretty easy to apply to determine, hopefully, that the series converges. All you need is that your series of the form negative one to the n times bn, where bn is positive, decreasing, and converges to zero. Then I get convergence of the series no matter what. So something like negative one to the n over the square root of n converged by the alternating series test. The only other option you really have for not all positive terms is to take the absolute value and then look for absolute convergence by using our positive series tricks that we'll talk about in a second. So again, here you're looking for absolute convergence, not just normal convergence, but that's fine. That might be the only route you have to try to solve this problem. With regards to those positive terms tricks, we can now think about these ones. So if a series now has only positive terms, or you made it that way by taking absolute values, we can use all these tricks that we have from those different sections. So in looking at your series, one you could consider is a direct comparison test. The main thing to think about here is, is there a way that I can move my series either bigger or smaller and get convergence or divergence respectively. In general here, you're trying to compare to a P-series, something that you know converges via P-series methods. And you're drawing into this by dropping terms from the numerator denominator or sort of removing things that are irrelevant from the expression to move it in the appropriate direction. And the big thing to be careful about here is the inequality. I must go bigger and get a convergent series to get convergence. I must go smaller and get a divergent series to get divergence. I can't mess up the order here, otherwise the result doesn't work. So one example here would be something like following n squared minus one over n to the fourth plus three. Well, I can make the top bigger by making it an n squared. I can make the bottom smaller by making it just an n to the fourth. So I know that n squared minus one over n to the fourth plus three is less than n squared over n to the fourth, which is one over n squared. And since that series converges, so does my original series. Another test you might think about is the limit comparison test. The main thing to think about here is, are there dominant terms in the numerator and denominator that I can use to control my expression that will tell me if it converges or diverges? The big benefit here is I don't have to worry about whether I'm getting bigger or smaller to make this happen, but I do have to pick something that's going to sort of approximate my series and behave the same way, as well as take a limit to get to my answer. There's an example here, something like n from 3 to infinity, n squared plus 1 over n to the fourth minus 3. I've swapped the plus and minus here. The issue being now a direct comparison won't work as well because my series gets smaller when I go to the 1 over n squared. But a smaller series converging doesn't tell me that I converge. What I can do instead is limit comparison with the same 1 over n squared. And then this limit 
of a n over b n is one, therefore they behave the same, and since this converges, so does this one. So does this one. Again, no inequality matters, but I must take the limit to see what happens here. A next option could be the ratio test. For the ratio test, you're looking for factorials. That's a big one. If you see that there's an indicator that you should be using the ratio test on this series, you can also think about polynomials and numbers raised to powers of n. All those behave really nicely with the ratio test because they cancel out nicely when you divide consecutive terms. Things go away and the expression ends up being nice that you need to take the limit of. But as an example of this, something like n equals 2 to infinity of 3 to the n over n factorial is a great candidate for the ratio test. When you set this limit, a n plus 1 over a n, this will become limit n goes to infinity 3 over n plus 1, which goes to 0, therefore it converges. Next, we think about the root test. The root test, you're looking for expressions of n raised to the nth power. Or really anything like f of n to the g of n, because taking the nth root of that will make it a lot simpler. And that's your main goal. Look for expressions where taking the nth root makes it simpler and apply the root test on those. This would look something like this, 2n over 5 minus 6n to the n. If we take the nth root of the nth term in the series, we're going to get a 2n over a 6n minus 5. It's going to flip because of the absolute value on the bottom. And that's nice to take the limit of. And that's the point. That'll be 1 third, so the series will converge. And then finally, last but maybe not least, is the integral test. The point being this never gives you an inclusive result, but you need to be able to integrate the expression to work it out. The thing you want to ask yourself is, can I integrate this expression if I were to convert the n's to x's? If so, then go ahead and do the integral test. It works every time, provided you can find the integral, which is usually the hard part of these types of problems. An example of this here is something like the sum from 4 to infinity of 1 over n log of n. None of our other tests really work very well on this series, but the integral from 2 to infinity of 1 over x ln of x is doable. To substitute u is ln of x, this turns into an integral from log of 2 to infinity of 1 over u, which diverges, so this series also diverges. Now we're going to go through four examples of series and how you might think about which test to apply at that point. So sum from 1 to infinity of 1 over n plus 2 all to the n. There are a couple of different ways you can handle this series. Um, the first I'll recommend is the direct comparison test. Why? Well, because n plus 2 is always bigger than 2, meaning 1 over n plus 2 to the n is always less than 2 to the minus n. And we know 2 to the minus n is a geometric series that converges. Therefore, my series converges. Another option is the root test, because you see expressions of n raised to the nth power. And so the root test there would give me that my limit t is n going to infinity, the nth root of a n, which is just the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n plus 2, which is 0. This is less than 1, so my series converges. The next example is 1 over n squared minus root n from 2 to infinity. And the key point here is that minus sign down there, which tells me I should use limit comparison, not direct comparison. Since my dominant term on the bottom is an n squared, I should let my bn be a 1 over n squared. And look at this limit as n goes to infinity of a n over bn, which is the limit as n goes to infinity, 1 over n squared minus root n over 1 over n squared. Which I can rewrite as limit n goes to infinity n squared over n squared minus root n. And by our highest power rule, this goes to 1 again, meaning that they behave the same. Since the series for bn converges, so does an. And that gives us our result there. For next series, n factorial over 2n factorial, I see factorials, which is screaming to me to do the ratio test. Let's set up this limit. It's a n plus 1 over a n. a n plus 1 will be n plus 1 factorial over 2 times n plus 1 factorial divided by n factorial over 2n factorial. Let's move some things around and reset this up a little bit. I get limit n goes to infinity n plus 1 factorial over n factorial times a 2n factorial over a 2n plus 2 factorial after distributing that 2. 
Now when I cancel things out, I will get an n plus 1 on this side, because the rest will cancel in the factorial, and I'll get a 1 over 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2 over here, because there's two terms left over once I cancel out the 2n factorial. This gives me a limit as n goes to infinity of an n plus 1 over 2n plus 1, 2n plus 2. I have a linear term on top and a quadratic on the bottom, therefore this goes to zero by highest power rule, which is less than one, and therefore my series converges. And finally we have this one, 3 to the n over n factorial. I did this one before, it's factorial, so it says ratio test again. So my row should be the limit as n goes to infinity of 3n plus one over n plus one factorial over three to the n over n factorial which becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of three over n plus one, which is zero, so it converges. That's the idea of all the different tests we have so far and how you can pick which one to use to determine if a series converges or diverges. There's a lot of different techniques here and a lot of ways to do this, but more practical to sort out quickly what tests will apply to a given series to give you the easiest way to determine whether or not it converges or diverges.